well, Dime Friend Kane and Acronym Google Frog, they are still on game one. They are still on Finn's Revenge. And I'm going to just pop it in once it loads because we're going to have to watch this really fast to try to figure out what happened. But five minutes in isn't too far. That's that we can catch up from. All right. So let's catch up. So we have Hover hover Amphib versus Hover Amphib. No surprises there. Pretty much the exact same setup as last time except the colors are reversed. Oh, but... Okay, Google Frog going for the side. Is that going to be attacked, harassed? I don't know. And a very quick expansion to the southeast from Dying Front. Actually, Kane and Dying Front nicely taking the corner expansions quickly. While possibly losing the center. Ooh, boy, I don't know. Google Frog coming in strong with those scalpels, but I think that those scalpels. I think those scalpels had a chance. They should be able to get in. I think Google Frog just waiting a little bit to make sure that they won't get counterattacked if they lose. Wise choice. But at this point, I don't think Kane... Does Kane know about the expansion? They do now! The Duck's coming in. Oh, they didn't quite take the title plants, but instead going for everything else. An early gunship switch, too. An early gun... Well, okay, not that early. Seven minutes in. Sorry, it's hard to tell when it's catching up at, like, ten times speed. But we did see kind of what was going on. So, an early attack from Google Frog hasn't really done much. These scalpels have been hanging around, just applying pressure by being there. Northwest does belong to Acronym. Southeast belongs... Looks like a belonged to Dying Friend, and they're just rebuilding it. But this area has not been destroyed, and Kane... Sorry, Dying Friend. Dying Friend is the one with those... What's that? No, that's Kane. Those are Kane's. Kane has that. Kane going for the gunship switch as well, but the gunship switch came up first for Google Frog. And at this point, the scalpel's coming in here. Like I said, they do have a pretty decent chance. There's, There's a stinger. And a few daggers. That's about it. Oh, and the halberds. Actually, the halberds are going to be a problem. Although the gnat knows about what's going on. Nice dodge on... Oh, not quite. I mean, it's not going to work against the daggers. But it's a nice dodge on that. But yeah, dying point. A little bit late in the razor. Didn't quite call it as a read, but at least they called it eventually. Or at least they responded eventually. They didn't call it, but, you know, they dealt with it. Now, a Valkyrie for what? Scallop drop? Ah, one, one player scallop drops. Four scallops, four Valkyries. Where could they drop? If they drop here... Let's see, where's the defenses laid out? So here's actually the best spot. They go just go for a straight line. There are no anti-air defenses. Neither Google Frog nor Acronym are expecting air. And that's exactly where Kane is going to be dropping. That's exactly where Kane should be dropping. So this drop should go remarkably well. There's hardly anything in the way of defenses. And a drop of a similar nature was being planned out already by Google Frog. But came out a little bit late. It looks like a scalpel drop in this case, rather than a scallop drop. Once again, I apologize about the naming, but there's nothing I can do about that. But yeah, scallop drop. Well, got rid of the gunships. Got rid of some... I mean, the Valkyries were never gotten rid of, though. There are still Valkyries. There's still a possibility for a drop. And those scalpels are being a problem. And that didn't accomplish as much as I thought it would. I was thinking more right here. Like, right next to both factories, rather than behind all of them. But at this point, counterattacks are incoming, but then again, actually, attacks on the left, so blue team, Kane attacking the left, Google Frog attacking the right, Google Frog, I, yeah, Google Frog is, okay, well, that's not gonna work. Kane, are you coming in for another drop? You're coming in for another drop? Well, you know what? There wasn't any Ravens built, so why not? This, okay, actually, that's why not. <laughs> what am I saying? There's too much. There's too much to fight through. That's why not. Too many scalps. Both drops. Yep, both both drops failed. No, swaps. Scrops. Both scrops failed. Because what is the 0k community if not weird made-up words that either involve changing one letter or just doing portmanteaus? Like scrop. So yes, the scrops failed. But not the scalp of salt here, so Akinem taking on the east side. So Akinem has basically cleared out the expansions. At this point, blue team is falling very quickly behind. And Kane's going for yet another drop. They know it's coming. There are razors set up now. And every time I click on that, I gotta remember why, where I hear that sound. I've heard that sound before. I think it was Marathon. I think I heard it in Marathon. I think they use the same public sound library, but... I can't remember. I think it's one of the platform movement sounds. 
Maybe the door sound. I think first level of Marathon Infinity, where you have the space station, I think the door that can't open uses that exact same sound. I think that's one of the examples. I remember looking for it last... I looked for it a couple months ago. No, no less recently. I looked for it a year ago. I couldn't find it, but then I was looking at multiplayer maps, and it had a different sound for the platforms, but I think... I think that's where it would was used. But that aside, something more interesting being the gnats. Well, gnat. Single gnat left, but still able to stun out these halibuts. At least get them out of the way. The important thing is they're out of position so Google Frog can have a field day without the scalpels being too worried. And that drop, once again, going down. I mean, getting rid of this area here, sure. That's good. Breaking that up. The main base actually doesn't have any anti-air defenses. At this point, a drop would be extremely powerful. Just to point out, a drop right now would rip this area entire this entire area apart. I don't know if Kane's gonna go for that though. Kane not paying attention to this drop, they have just finished it off, but they could take this out. And the Halberds coming in from the side, but not able to do too much. As we saw in the first game, Halberds on hold position do extremely well. Halberds, sorry, hold fire since they do extremely well. But when they're at fire at will, they lose their armor too unpredictably. And thus do not do so well. And the counter drop coming here. So we're just playing drop and counter drop. Scallop drop and scalpel counter drop. But where is the scallop drop going? Scallop drop's going to its death! Scallops all decided to die. Actually, going to the water side leaves. I can lose in their commander. Not a bad kill. Actually, at this stage of the game, it's still fairly important. I can with only 17 metal right now. Which is kind of surprising. But yeah, I guess... It... Wait, no. What? That can't be right. I think that this is actually slightly wrong, guys. I think the way it works is that this stuff is shares so that both players actually have effectively 40 metal, not 20. So like whatever's here, add it together, except for the or add the minimum of the two together, and then that's what both of them have on top of a commander and reclaim. Like that's as far as I can tell how it's supposed to work. Like take the minimum double it, and then for whoever has more than the minimum, add the difference. Yeah, this this is game. I mean, they've already called it GG, so yeah, this is this is game, but yeah, the economy panel, I'm thinking, might be slightly mistaken in how much total economy, or how much economy, not total, but individually each player has. Because if look at this right here, I mean, that's, every single one of these is about, oh, that's four, and every one of these is about three. And it's clearly, actually, one, two, that was 18. No, oh, they were 26. Yeah, okay, I guess I could. No, that's that's still more. Like 34. Yeah, considered individually those numbers make some... I don't know. I'm counting it up. It's sort of adding up and sort of not. I mean, this looks like this is 17 metal for Google Frog and another 15 or so for Aqua... No, no. 20 for acronym, which actually doesn't quite add up. Hmm. Anyway, that was game one, so we're gonna move on to game two. That'll be up once the map is chosen. Yeah, that was a bit less even than the first match. Also shorter, but yeah, those halberds. I mean, the halberds really saved. They saved Skazi before. I mean, Skazi and Orphelius got saved by their own halberds, but in this case, not so much. But Dying Friend and Kane, I mean, the, Kane's first drop, it was like, if it was a bit further down, it probably could have taken out both the gunship plant and the hovercraft factory, which would have slowed things down a bit more. If they'd managed to take out all three factories, they would have bought a lot of time. But unfortunately, did not, and when the timing was right, the knowledge was not. So we'll see. It is Dying Friend and Kane's pick on the map. And I shall also point, oh, she, I think this is. I'm not sure this is the only game going on right now, I think. Oh. Halberd Micro is apparently extremely tiring. Well, yeah, of course it's tiring. It, Halberd Micro is kind of tiring. They're just very powerful for it. But yeah, I mean, okay, that's true. Putting them on hold fire, putting Halberds on hold fire is probably kind of tiring. It's probably fairly difficult. I can totally understand that. 
But at the same time, okay, what are we playing on? We are playing on Titan Duel. Okay. So that is going to be game two. And as you can see here in the brackets, yeah, fire left, so that's just counted as forfeit. So we are going to just have the four teams. And yeah, one of them just would have went and lost. Well, that's much lose as forfeited. Let's see here. Are you gonna start up or not? Because starting up would be nice. I, I would quite like it if players were to, you know, start. Alright, so... We are on Titan Duel. The game will soon start, as soon as... Okay, Goofa gets back from having a drink. And then once that happens, we will have game two. And afterwards, I will get a glass of water myself because I am starting to get thirsty. I'm starting to feel the fact that I've been talking non-stop for the last hour and 20 minutes. That's faster than usual. I have been sick. I might explain why. Okay, we're on Titan Duel. And the game is about to start up. Come on, start up. Is Akronim getting water too? <sighs> okay, there we go. Now we're getting the game started. I mean, we're gonna have winner's finals right after this, so... I suppose getting water is good. Is it whoever... Well, not right after this, necessarily. I mean, for all I know, Dying Friend and Kane have some really good trick in mind. They have something up their sleeve, and they will win this. I don't know. Maybe. That was going to be a lot harder for them than I would have otherwise guessed. Like, with the earlier team setup, where it was, well, Parzival and Major... Well, Skazi and Ophelius just joined in the very last minute. And before, I kind of predicted that Dying Friend and Kane would get third. And now, they're going to have a rough time getting third, I think. There's going to be a bit of a tough... A bit of a slog to get third. Skazi and Ophelius are very strong. And we've seen both of them against... Well, strong teams, and we hadn't seen Google Frog and Aquinum before. But we ha do see them now, and... This... Well, Diamond and Kane starting in the northwest side of the map. Diamond going for light vehicles. We should see probably light ve- uh, I don't know, this map, you, off you more often than not see air starts. Like, half the time, I think. It's one of the more common ones to see air starts, so I could see like, light vehicle and gunship. Like, Aquinum going for gunship and Google Frog going for light vehicle. And double light vehicle from the blue team. Interesting. Are they going to go for some synergies, or are they just going to go mass scorchers? Well, Akinem going for heavy tanks, and Google Frog has not yet chosen their factory. I'm really curious what they're going to go for. They're going for light vehicle, so light vehicle, heavy tank, and double light vehicle. I'm very surprised. Looks like, indeed, mass scorchers. Just pumping out all the Scorchers. I like, get all the Scorchers, I can see from the build cues, it's just Scorchers. Google Frog and Aquam, or Google Frog at least playing for the late game. Aquam going for a bit of early harassment. Google Frog getting builders. Yeah, playing for the mid, playing for two minutes in. <laughs> playing for, assuming that they're not getting cheesed out, but they are getting cheesed out. Mass Scorcher, and I'm guessing about eight. Yep, they're moving out at eight. And this might give it away. Oh, no, no, it won't. No, this timing for Scorcher is a little bit off. It's a little bit unusual that the Scorchers are just leaving the base now. But I don't know if Google Frog and Acronym are going to quite call it. I don't know if they have to, though. I'm not sure this is actually a proper mix-up. I mean, as it stands... Yeah, it is. Never mind. I just turned on defense ranges. And as you can see, nothing changed. There are no stag defenses. There's also no ra uh, There's radar. What am I saying? Nope. Oh, there is. Yeah, there is radar. As you can see, the radar is... They are inside a radar range. So, Dying Throne and Kane have shown their strategy. They've tipped their hand, but they also are already inside of Google Frog and Akronim's base. Which, basically, it will come down to whether or not they die from the Converse. If the Converse here... Because they're going to go for a double dive. 
Oh, I think the combo No, they only went for a single. Only a single dive was successful, and even then, that's not enough. Oh, Google Frog killing their allies commander at the very end with splash damage on the riot cannon. But hey, that's a lot of reclaim. That's a thousand reclaim. But still, Google Frog friendly fire isn't friendly. I just want to know, Cannon Dying Point, I mean, that wasn't a great attack. That, like, they didn't, they got a commander killed, but inside of its base, and I think they wanted to kill both, I mean, they clearly wanted to kill both commanders. If they had killed both commanders, if a double dive had actually worked out, which is probably why they went for eight, if they managed to get that, that probably would be, if not game, a massive advantage. But because Google Frog's commander is still there, well, there's a massive source of reclaim. Google Frog has all the economy they need. So at this point, Diamond Friend and Kane, well, they gotta defend, they gotta build up, they gotta reconsolidate. They're still slightly ahead of... Oh, no, they're, they're even economically. Assuming that this is correct, which I think it is. I mean... I don't know anymore. The economy display is just weird. Because this should theoretically show 10 for both of them, and then... Yeah, 10 for Diamond Friend and Kane. Okay, Diamond Friend and Kane is correct. Showing 10 for... No, 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 that's... Because they each have commanders, that would be 6 for both. Okay, is it split in half and give to each player? Or is the is this player list just wrong? I, I'm actually going to turn on the economy panel. I'm really getting confused by this now. Because the economy panel is right. No, apparently, according to the economy panel, they each have... Yeah, according to the economy panel, everything is actually correct. Well, that is good to know. I was getting really confused because it looked... Oh, too far to the left. It looked like everything was set up such that Dimefront and Kane had a stronger economy than they do. I mean, 10 each plus commander, so 14 each. Apparently not. Okay, that is good to know. Strange, but good to know. I'm starting to get really confused as to how the economy system is actually displaying. But anyway, it looks like at this point, Akinem and Google Frog, if you look at what they have, they have this corner. Diamond Front and Kane are expanding fairly quick. I mean, they're kind of taking advantage of the fact that they did deal some damage early on. They did pressure early on. But they're going to have to win at least two more engagements, I think, just to get themselves more stabilized. I mean, yeah, Akinem lost their commander, and they lost some of the economy as a result of that. But there's also the reclaim, which is being taken right now. And... What else is there? I mean, they're expanding fairly quick. But at the same time, so is Dime Friend. Dime Friend has one one builder. Kane is their commander, and that's it. Kane is just a commander. Okay, that's that's not good for Kane and Dime Friend. They're gonna be expanding more slowly. Google Frog and Aquinum have they have the benefit of more workers. I mean, Google Frog alone is just expanding across the map with commander, with well, using one mason to expand another one to reclaim. So at this point. Team, the blue team does have a weaker economy. That's why they need to win some engagements, especially outside of the red team's territory. I don't know. That that could happen. Do have levelers coming up. It will help with the Scorcher attacks, but even then, that's kind of out of position to where the Scorchers are. Looks like Dying Throne has a bit of weak control. They should be able to take the northeast without too much trouble, at least at first. Now, what does everyone know? Okay, so... Blue team knows about here, and the red team knows the other half. The red team actually doesn't know about this. They do know, however, if something is going to move into it. So they got to be careful about that. But yeah, red team right now is likely to start attacking in the north once they see anything move out of radar range to the north. While the blue team... Oh, for crying out loud, must this thing crash every bloody game? Seriously, what did they break? Wow. It has never been this bad for me. Ever. This is ridiculous. I think every single game has had a crash somewhere in the middle. I think it's because I'm hitting 5. I think it is because I'm trying to select everything. Or trying to be able to hover over. It's not select, it's actually hover over. You can select anything, but getting the hover over information, you can only get if you are either currently selecting that team, or you're selecting the any player who's not on either team. But apparently it just wants to break now. 
Apparently it just wants to seg fault anytime I do that. Anytime anything anything something good I want to have happen happens, or you know, useful feature, it has to just crash, because of course it does, because they're trying to spite me, I'm sure. This is so annoying. Like every single game in this tournament has had a crash. I'll just have to stop hitting five. I just remember, just don't hit five. Okay, so apparently Anakin's pointing out in chat that it accounts for commander. Good to know. Anyway, back to the game. So, it looks like not much has changed position-wise. Dimefront has taken the northeast side of the map. Kane is not really contesting the southwest side, and it looks like Google Frog, although, got a bit of a... bit of a scuffle. They hit that leveler, or what? Oh, Banisher, that's why Akron is Ban... No, no, Akron is Banisher. Who's... Who hit that? These Scorchers are in bad shape. Well, at any rate, that's a... Pretty decent time to attack. I mean, the scorches are in bad shape. There's not much else to defend against this. Google Frog's commander being forced back, and Akronim did already lose their commander. So will Dimefriend and Kane be able to take this? I don't know. Oh, maybe it was the star. Okay, I guess the Stardust was the reason why everything was so damaged. That would make sense. Alright, I kind of missed that because that was during the catch-up phase after the crash. Because for some reason this engine wants to crash all the time. I have no idea why. I can't check the info log, I don't have time. But, yeah, that was, that was the crash. Well, I don't have time, I'm commentating this, I need to get, I, the crashes are eating a lot of time as it is from the commentary. I don't have the time to go look at the info log, I'm sorry, engine devs, I'll have to try to reproduce it later. Although, given how often it's happening, I don't even know if I have to try to reproduce it, it may just happen naturally. Anyhow, at this point, Looks like Akronim trying to push out the Reapers. They are rather well, building up Reapers. That's always the scariest stage of the game. But at this point, they also only have a solid plus 13, so maybe not. I mean, they're building them up. They already have two. Actually, well, two and a third in production. This is starting to get scary. The northeast side of the map is basically doomed. And Google Frog, Google Frog has an economic advantage from the looks of it. What? Really? Yeah, apparently they do. Apparently, Google Frog does have an economic advantage. Or, oh, that was partly Reclaim. Okay, but they're still up the front lines. They can still get Reclaim, reclaim very easily. Reclaim. Because I don't feel like pronouncing things correctly today. I'm out of good pronunciation, apparently. Hmm. Levelers and Ravagers versus Ravager, Leveler, and a bunch of Scorchers. I think, well, I think Google Frog knows who wins. Retreating as a result. Well, let's see. Can't you be able to take this out? Should we be able to take maybe this out? Depending on how far they want to push in. And that welder is going to go down. Of course, I say that as well. Yep, that goes down. Oh, the Ravagers get out of position. The levelers really need to be right there. That is unfortunate for the Ravagers. All of them going down. Nice catch. Nice trap set up by Google Frog. I mean, the southwest here is basically dead, but still, that was four Ravagers for basically free. Those levelers are just a tad slower, which means the Ravagers are able to get in and thus get themselves killed. Down goes the Banisher. That Reaper is still taking some damage. To point out that if you are if you are curious, Repair is actually really slow in combat. It's like half, like whatever the build power used, have that times HP over cost, which for Reapers is I think a like per second. I think for Reapers like 850, 6,000. That would be about yeah eight HP per second. So. 8 HP per build power per second, but 4 HP in combat per build power per second. Which means about, for the workers, about 20... Like for the, actually, no, these are a bit faster. It's like 30 per second in combat. Out of combat, it'd be close to 120. It quadruples out of combat. But yeah, in combat, that is not particularly fast. So the repair is helpful, but it's not going to stop the Reapers from dying. Unless the repair values have changed. But yeah, at this point, Reaper is going to be repaired by about 30, 30 HP per second by this welder. Until it's out of combat for about 10 seconds, I think. And then after that, it's going to repair very quickly. Like I said, 120 or so. Yeah, this is... Now we're out of combat. I didn't say in-combat repair was bad, Skazi. I just said it wasn't necessarily going to save something if it's getting under heavy attack. And people might be curious, they're thinking, oh, you have in-combat repair? Oh, that's just... that's cheap! How are you supposed to kill anything? Well, because it's not particularly strong in-combat repair. 
Now Google Frog's taking the southwest, but Dying Throne has lost the northeast. Relying quite a bit on repair, or sorry, on reclaim, not on re I pronounced that weirdly. On repair, sorry, on reclaim, not repair. They're not relying on repair, they're actually getting their units killed for a massive assault, hopefully for the best, but yeah, they're, they're losing a lot of units, in fact. They're doing the exact opposite of repairing. They're letting units just die. Dealing a bit of damage in the backyard, which is good. But not the most damage. And down go the levelers, and down goes the banisher as well. So at least they took care of a banisher, but all of that was inside of Google Frog and Aquadum's territory. Which means, of course, all of that is going to be reclaimed. We're still dying for getting a lot of reclaim. Or apparently getting a lot of reclaim. They have... They must be, because they were getting a lot of economy. But at this point, fairly even. Dying for and Kane are not too, falling too far behind. But now the southwest... I mean, the southwest is open. I don't think they know about it. No, they do not. Their radar is not in range... They, no. No, they don't. They have no idea. No idea whatsoever that that's about to happen. Is that just whenever I switch? Yeah. Okay, so it just cuts it as soon as I switch out and it can't be seen by the other player. That's a bug that I don't know how to fix offhand, and I haven't looked into too much. The bug is that whenever a vision is restored of an area, it should recalculate all the overdrive stuff, or at least double, if vision was lost, restore it for spectators and then recalculate, so reshow all the overdrive. That would be the solution, but I'm not sure exactly how that's done because the widget is not the most straightforward. I really should actually. I got an open issue about that. There's so many issues. I got a crash bug now, and I have this long standing issue with showing the overdrive circles when. You're changing vision, or changing visibility. Yeah, for spectators at least. So that's something to bear in mind. And that being said though, north side getting a lot of damage. The Wolverine's not able to stop these Reapers. Three Reapers, a Banisher, and a Welder as repair support. Well, against two Lotuses and a few Wolverines, that's not going to help too much. And the south side being disarmed out. Ghoul Frog and Aquanim should be able to just run through fairly quick. Crash is doing a decent job, and... Ooh, Geothermal Power Plant getting gotten rid of by a Scorcher. I don't even see the corpse that was so destructive. But at this point, yeah, Dying Frog and Kane... Well, Kane just lost that Geothermal Plant, which is a major pain. They did not want to have that happen, I'm sure. Although they're not producing very much either. They actually... They, okay, Kane is producing a bit more. Now both players pushing in 20. Why are they... Why are they nearly accessing? That's very strange. But the south side has opened up again. Disarm should be coming in once... You know, Apol Napalm bombing. Phoenix coming in. No Thunderbirds yet. And that just hits a single worker. Which will probably die as a result, but... That's still one worker. That's not what they probably wanted to hit. They probably wanted to hit the Reapers. Or the Ravagers, I mean. How many Reapers are there, anyway? Five Reapers, all of which belong to Aquanim. So, basically one push, and it's gonna be kinda... Okay, this is what the Phoenix wanted to do! That's exactly what Aquanim wants. And that's what they got. Actually, not Aquanim, Google Frog. Aquanim sure probably wants that too. But Google Frog is the one in control of those particular Phoenixes. However, the Scorchers survive barely! Wow! They do, however, survive. That's the key thing. They survive. One Reaper down? Is it? Maybe? No? No. The answer is no. No, it's not. Never mind. Thought it was. Not quite. Banisher got taken out, which is good for the Scorchers, but that's not really what was necessary. And the heavily damaged Reapers are going to get repaired, which once again means Dangfrund and Kane are not going to be able to win that easily. So at this point, Kane and Dangfrund. Haven't retaken the Northeast. Haven't really taken much of the center, although I wouldn't suggest they do at this point. They've been reclaiming a decent amount. Dying Throne's been reclaiming a lot. They've been really going forward and taking that reclaim wherever they can. Which is good. That's what they need to do. And these Scorchers will not last long. Levelers and Banishers. Yeah, the Scorchers are in a very tight spot. But hey, maybe they'll be able to die terribly. That's all they can really do is just die terribly. Actually, that and kind of kite. Well, knocked the Reaper down to half health. But that was a lot of Scorchers knocked the Reaper simply down to half health, not even to kill it. 
that wasn't really the best of choices. And over here... Yeah, the Reapers are getting some pressure. At least that's something. Keeping them pressured, keeping their repair slow, keeping them damaged, and... I think we will attack. Oh, but it doesn't matter. The south side is completely opened up by that Thunderbird. I mean, the difference between EMP and disarm is kind of moot when you're dealing with static structures. They can't exactly run away when they're disarmed. And I don't think these Reapers... I mean, these Reapers are not really close enough to death to be worried about. And that is going to be it! Dying Friend and Kane throwing in the towel, and they should win the game soon after because this win counter, or rather the underlying code that supports the win counter has suddenly stopped working. It got... it was working, then it got broken by something in the version changes, then it got fixed again, and now it's broken again. Possibly didn't engine changes. I don't know. But Dying Friend not ready to throw in the towel yet, apparently. Oh no, well, they, they should be ready to throw in the towel because the entire west side has been completely knocked down. Yes, it does suck. I'm actually curious, how much did they excess? Metal excess. Dying Friend excess 206, but overall, that was really low excess for that... For that kind of game, they actually kept everything fairly reasonable. Yeah, for 18k, for, well, 13 to 18, mostly 17, 18k metal. Aquanim, as you can really see the effect of the loss of a commander throughout the entire game. Like, Aquanim having not had their commander throughout the entire game. Although, I've got to say, for that opening cheese, like, for a cheese opening like that, that was really what I, oh, 2-0, how about that? It worked this time. But yeah, for a cheese opening like that, wow, that was powerful. Okay, metal sent... Yeah, Dying Throne sent a bit. Which is effectively metal excess where it doesn't count. As far as I understand. But yeah. That's pretty good for excess stats. Gotta say. Especially given the amount of metal used. Anyway, big difference in the commander though. 4,000 metal difference for Aquinum. Just because of the loss of a commander. Well, it doesn't really matter. The Google Frog also had the highest economy and they were on the same team. So that worked out. Anyway, that was that. That is also it for the semifinals. We're going to move on to the winner's finals in just a moment, but I need to go get a glass of water. So stay tuned, because I... I need to drink. Of water, not anything alcoholic. Be back in a sec. 